Now, I'm going to talk about a case. We talk about that case in the book. It's an interesting case. It shows some of the value of a CT angiogram. So Arnold comes in he says, Doc, I can't believe you're saying the same thing as the other doctors. Now, whoa, wait a minute. Let's go back and see what that's about. It was because I had told him, yeah, I think you need to use statins. So he had come to me because here's what happened. He was 63 years old. He fainted while he was fishing with his son. They took him to the emergency department. The doc in the ER said, I can't find anything wrong. But why don't you take these statins? Well, Arnold doesn't like statins, didn't want to take statins, didn't like the idea of it. So he went to his internist. He didn't start with the statins based on the ER docs. He went to the internist. The internist said the same thing. He did a stress test. Arnold passed the stress test without any problems. The stress test was negative. But then he said, Arnold, I think, you know, I still think you need to take statins. Well, again, Arnold didn't like that. He knew a little bit about my channel. He knew I had a different perspective on those. In fact, I don't recommend those unless you already have plaque. And then when you do have plaque, if you do, we do recommend it, it's very low dose as opposed to high dose. So Arnold came to see me and we did a CIMT. The CIMT was actually normal. It didn't show anything. So, you know, that raised some questions. So, you know, what was going on in terms of the fainting? He did have some evidence of cardiovascular inflammation. He had an elevated C-reactive protein. Arnold had some cardiovascular inflammation. He had a borderline oral glucose tolerance test and insulin response. So what we knew was that he had some of the underlying causes. He had some evidence that those causes may be active. He had a, a borderline A1C. And again, when you start looking at this, especially in the baby boomer age group, my age folks, 60 to 65 and younger and older, one of the most common causes of this problem is borderline or moderate prediabetes or even full-blown diabetes. But again, glucose metabolism problems that just have not been recognized. They were missed. And we talk about that in other parts on the channel, plenty of other videos. His basal insulin was seven, a little bit high. The basal insulin that we would like to see is five or less. For those of you who are worried about LDL, he wasn't an FH patient. His LDL was 98 and he wasn't on the statins at all. So that wasn't an issue. I ordered a CTA, CT angiogram. Yes, he had plaque in the left anterior descending artery. That's called the Widowmaker. And the report made it clear it wasn't occlusive. So that's why he didn't block flow of the blood. So that's why his stress test was negative. We did some more work. We're able to go back and make some adjustments on the CIMT and then did find that yes, there was evidence of soft plaque. I described that soft plaque. I talked with him about the fact that soft plaque can cause a heart attack even if it doesn't block blood flow. The fact that plaque was present indicated that Arnold had been through cycles of insulin resistance and inflammation as I had suspected. And as I see time and time again, all day, every day when I see patients. So here's the rest of Arnold's story. Four years later, CIMT did show continued evidence of healthy arteries if you just looked at it without knowing Arnold's story. His coronary calcium score began to show positive. He began to, he agreed to take the statin. He made some changes in terms of his lifestyle. He lost some weight and he started to calcify that plaque that he had had. He knew this was a good result and it meant that small amount of soft plaque that he'd had had been soft. It had been difficult to find. The CT angiogram helped us find it and it had risk of rupture. Once he reversed this situation, got it calcified, he knew that he had decreased the risk for heart attack and stroke. You know, he's an anxious guy. He's still a little bit anxious, but not nearly like he was before. He's comfortable that we've found the issue, we've understood it, we've dealt with it, and we know what to do. He increased his exercise regimen. He's doing it daily now. He's feeling confident that fainting spells were not related to some kind of future cardiovascular event. And guess what? He hasn't had any other fainting spells since then.